everybody and welcome back to our crafting Saturdays. Um, today we're going to be making some super fun things. Um, this is mostly like construction paper base so hopefully you have colorful paper at home and if not sometimes what I do is I just take a piece of paper and just color the whole thing with a marker and then you just have some homemade like construction paper. The thickness of the paper doesn't matter so if you want to do that with some just like regular printer paper that's fine too. But we're going to get started, and I'm going to be showing you what we're making today. This, we are going to be making a pinwheel. Really easy to make at home. Only needs a few different materials. And I'm also going to be showing you guys how to paper weave, okay? And this is, looks pretty simple, but if you add a bunch of other pieces, it looks so cool. I'll show you more about that later once we get to it. But we're going to start with our pinwheel, okay? It's been pretty windy outside, and so I think this might be a really easy project to do at home with like the amount of materials that you should just usually have laying around your house, okay? So, to get started, we are going to be using only a few materials for this, really. All materials that you can find around your house. So I'm going to be having two different pieces of paper that are one for the petals for I guess for the actual windmill part and then one for the actual stick okay I chose gr orange and green for this one but to for this one that we're gonna be doing I think I'm gonna go with a yellow and another green for my actual handle okay <clears throat> so now that we've got our paper down we need our paper we need a pencil a ruler, some scissors, and a pin. I'm going to bring this a little bit closer, but our pin is your regular old sewing pin, but it's one of those pins that hold your seam together. So it has this little red ball here at the top. And if you don't have that at home, anything would work if it has a thicker top okay so like a nail or a push pin anything that has a thicker top because a regular sewing needle wouldn't work it would just slip right through the middle of our our pinwheel okay so oh one last material that you actually are going to need for sure is two new pencils okay pencils that you are that have maybe been used like a lot and that you don't care about cutting off the tips okay also if you don't care about fully just using this pencil all uh, for for what we're doing today okay so now to get started let's clear our space paper out of the way all we're gonna be needing first is our or uh, handle paper, okay? The paper that you want your handle to be, okay? So I chose green, and what you're gonna be doing is you're going to be taking your pencil, and you are going to be, you're gonna want it to be, you're, you're definitely gonna want it to be like a newer kind of pencil, okay? You want it to be as long as it can be, okay? So you're gonna be taking your pencil and finding the edge and really lining that up. So you're going to hold your pencil there and you're going to take an actual pencil that you're going to be drawing with that's sharpened and you're going to be drawing a line right underneath your eraser. So we can really see where that spot is because we want our eraser to be sticking out the top. So now that we have our little mark, we're going to be taking our ruler, finding, lining it up with that mark, making sure that's even and making a line all the way across, just like so. Moving our paper away, we should have a line there. And I personally think it's easier to move my paper up like this and cutting straight up. So I'm taking my scissors and cutting up that line. All right. Now that we have that off, we are going to be keeping, you're going to take your ruler and you're going to be keeping about, 
Hmm, let's say four inches, okay? You're gonna be keeping four inches of paper. So measure that out with your ruler, find that four inch mark and make a little line. You're gonna be taking your ruler once again, lining up with that little mark that you've made and making a line going down. We're really not gonna need a lot of paper. Right now we are making the paper that's going to be covering our pencil, okay? Now you could be doing all these steps and you could be making your own handle as well, but get creative, you know, if you have other, if you're lucky and have like a bunch of crafting materials at home, you can use wire or you can use I don't know, pipe cleaners? Pipe cleaners might be a little bit too wiggly for what we're doing today. But personally, if you don't feel like doing all this cutting and gluing, you can also just paint that pencil green. <laughs> Not too hard. So you're gonna be taking your smaller half now. Take your smaller half of that paper, and that's what we're gonna be using today to cover our pencil, okay? So we're gonna be taking our fresh pencil, unsharpened, fresh eraser and everything, and before we do any gluing, we really just want to get that curve going, okay? Because if I just start gluing and rolling like this, it's going gonna, it's gonna to unravel. So we're going to be, what my method is, is I'm going to be lining it up, folding over that first curve mark, and I'm going to be squeezing and rolling as I go, kind of like how you roll up a sleeping bag. So I'm really just trying to make those curved marks right now, just so... When I actually do my gluing, the paper is not completely straight. It already has that little bend to it, okay? So I'm gonna do some little squeezes, just a little bit of squeezing around the edges here. Let me make sure that's a curved little tube you got going on. And then you can let it unravel. Take that pencil out of there. And now we are going to actually glue it down. Now, now that our paper is pretty curved, we are going to be taking, oops, I actually forgot to mention, we are gonna be needing a glue stick. All right, I've gotten my glue stick. Hopefully you've got yours too. And we are going to be taking our glue stick, uncapping that, and we are going to be covering our whole pencil with glue, except for our eraser, okay? So I'm gonna be holding the tip of my pencil while I go up and down on my pencil with glue. You want a good amount on there. Really make sure you're covering all the surfaces of that pencil. Alrighty. That's one sticky pencil. Now that you've got a fully sticky pencil, you're gonna cap Actually, don't cap your glue yet. You're gonna need it in just a moment. I'm gonna put that right to the side there. And I'm going to be taking my pencil by the eraser, opening up my little map shape piece of paper, and I'm going to be laying it right up there on the top. Make sure it's lined up. Curve over that first spot. Your fingers are gonna get sticky, but that's why we got sinks. Don't worry about it. And we're gonna be squeezing, making sure that our paper is fully attached onto our pencil and rolling it all the way down to the bottom. Now, if there's space in your pencil, I mean, in your paper between your pencil, don't worry about it. When we glue it on the edge here, it should all stay sturdy because of that inner gluing that we did with our pencil. So now that we have that curved all the way down to the edge here, we're gonna be once again taking our glue stick and really just getting the edges all gluey, all the way down. Folding it over. Making sure all those spots are glued down and giving it a good squeeze. Really make sure all those spots are kind of seamless, okay? I chose green because I wanted my windmill to look a little bit more like a flower, okay? So now that I have that pretty much glued down all the way, it should look a little bit something like this. 
green or whatever color you used right and up until that eraser okay we really want that to be sticking out because that's where we're going to be placing our wheel okay so we're going to put this to the side because we don't need our handle anymore and we are going to be taking our piece of paper that we are going to be using for our petals here our windmill so i'm capping my glue moving it over to the side and we're not going to be needing that anymore so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking my paper, making a valley fold, which is just folding it over. And I'm going to be connecting those edges, making sure that those are seamless, lined up, holding my fingers on the edge here and really flattening out that corner, making a little card shape. All right. Ready to go. Now that we've got that all set in stone, we are going to be taking our piece of paper, opening it up, and hopefully you guys can see this line here. We've got a line right in the middle. And we're gonna be doing a little bit of an origami move right now by taking our corner here and folding it so our line here is lined up with our inner line. And I, once I get to that inner line, I'm taking my paper and I'm folding. So I'm gonna do that for you guys one more time. I'm taking my bottom right-hand corner, finding my line in the middle. If it's easier for you, you can take a pencil and draw down that line so you can really see where you're, what you're doing. You're gonna be lining up this half edge of your paper to that inner line. Okay, and this is how you make a perfect square. If you're trying to make some origami or you're trying to make like a paper hat or anything really that needs a perfect square, this is the perfect way to get all of these lines of a square even. Okay, all of these edges. So now that I have my triangle shape here, I'm gonna be taking my scissors. Well, you know what might be easier? If before we even take out our scissors, really just tracing that other piece that we have here. So we folded it, found, it our, found our edge, and now I'm going to be drawing that line across the top here. Unfolding and cutting down that line. And then cutting down our other line to make our square. So just so you can see it, this line and this line should be cut just to make our perfect square. So I'm cutting up and cutting down. There you go. Moving our pieces over to the side that we're not using. We now should have a line going across diagonally. And now we are going to be mimicking that fold by doing the same thing on the other side. So taking that upper left-hand corner and bringing it down to our other bottom right-hand corner and folding. Should look like this now, a triangle. And once we have that line down, we are going to be opening our shape back and we should have a little X fold in the middle. And this is usually the, this fold that we have here is how most origamis start. So just from this project, you already have the first step of practicing some origami. But we're gonna be doing something that most origami things don't usually use. We're gonna be using some scissors, okay? Origami is mostly just folding. But today we're gonna to be needing to do some cuts. So before I actually start cutting, I am going to be finding the middle of these lines. So make a little dot in the middle of your X. And that's where your pin is gonna go, okay? But we're not quite there yet. So make your little circle for your pin. And in the middle of these lines here, you're going to be making a little mark just to see and to show yourself where you're gonna stop your cutting mark, okay? Right in the middle of those lines. I'm not making it super dark, even though you're not really gonna be able to see it anyways. So now your paper should look a little bit like this. Circle in the middle. 
some lines around it, four lines. So now I'm going to be taking my scissors and on each corner I'm going to be cutting on the line down to that little mark that we just made. And I'm going to be doing that same thing on these four other corners. All right, there we go. <clears throat> now that we have our four corners cut, we are going to be taking our edges and curling them in. But before we do that step, if you want, you can turn your paper around so that your markings are down towards the table and you could do some decorations with some markers if you'd like or any colored pencils, markers, any type of drawing things that you have, you can decorate the outside of your paper, okay? So make sure that you have your paper up, back with your markings, because I am not gonna be decorating my windmill today, I'm gonna keep it simple, and I am going to be make sure that I have my pin ready to go. I'm going to be putting it here to the side so it's ready for me, because I'm gonna be holding it with one hand and then putting my pin through. So starting with the top, I'm finding my triangle, finding the left corner of my triangle and bringing it into the middle. I'm gonna be holding it with one hand, that corner, and doing the same thing with all of my other triangles. So I'm going to be taking the left corner of this triangle and bringing it in, and then using that same thumb to hold that corner too. And if it's easier, you can start switching your thumbs as you turn your windmill, as you take those left top corners and connecting them with the rest of your other triangles. I am pinching and turning as I fold in my spots. Okay, so it looks like here I made a little bit of a mistake and didn't make my line long enough, but that's okay. You've got two hands. I'm going to make mine a little bit longer and I'm going to be connecting that one just like I did with the rest. So now your windmill should look a little bit like this. And now still squeezing all of those corners, you are going to be either having your helper put it through for you or you can try and do it yourself. Just make sure that you're careful because usually these needles are very sharp. They should be very sharp if you're going to be able to be pushing through all four corners here. So I'm taking my pin and going through every single one of those corners here. Okay, you can check on the sides, make sure that you're getting every single one of them. All right, I think they're covering they're going through each one of my corners and then on the back it should look something like this. You should be able to see your nail, your needle coming out. So now what you do is you want to push it out just a little bit like that so it's not going to be all the way connected and you are going to be taking your, your windmill, holding it to the side and you're going to have your helper hold it for you while you do some cuts. Okay, so my helper is gonna hold the top here, hold the top here, nope, hold the top there, perfect. <laughs> and you are going to be taking your new eraser, your second pencil that you have not used, and you are going to be cutting off that eraser tip. I think it might be a better idea if you do this part first, that was my mistake. So you want to be having, making sure that you have only the eraser tip, okay? You are going to be taking that back from your helper. And you are going to be using your eraser tip to make sure that you don't have any pokey parts left of your needle that, are, that should be sticking out of the back. So I'm pushing it through, not all the way and I'm kind of evening it out. I'm making sure that my whole windmill is kind of pushed and evenly dispersed on my needle, okay? So now that I have that all connected, this is sturdy and I can put it down now. 
I'm going to be picking up my handle, lifting up my windmill, squeezing once again and taking that eraser off and pushing it through my handles eraser. There we go. I did it a little bit too much, so I'm going to try that one more time, actually. Ooh, so satisfying. Okay. So now that you have a little tip, there should be a little tip left of your pin, okay? So now, once again, you're going to take your eraser tip and really push it on there. And now there shouldn't be any pokey part of your needle left. And now you want to make sure all of your little windmill curls are curved so that the wind can be caught. And you can give it a little blow. You really want to blow into those little tubes there. And this is a super easy project to do at home, guys. If you want to make it um, waterproof so you can put it outside, you you can, um, if you have like a laminator, you can use a laminator for your windmill and make it so if it's ever a rainy day or you can have them in your garden. All right, for our second project, we are going to be making paper weaves. So this is a really basic way to start weaving. People weave all the time with clothing but today we're going to be using our um, construction paper, okay? So I recommend getting a darker color for your base paper. I've chosen black. And then three other colors for your inner weaves, your horizontal weaves. So it's really up to you if you want to choose different colors, but I'm going with three today. So I'm going to be moving my materials out of the way, taking all three of my pieces, or as many as they're using, and I'm going to be making lines down. So I'm having my paper horizontal as I'm taking my uh, ruler and making wide strips going all the way down. I'm doing about two inches here. But if you want to make it a little bit more detailed, you can do super skinny pieces and a bunch of different colors. Anyway, it looks beautiful though. All right, now that I have that done, I'm definitely not going to use all of this. So you can make another one if you'd like with your spare strips. But now I'm going to cut all of these lines. I'm actually going to stop there because I feel like that's more than enough. I'm going to separate my colors, so my dark blues, my medium blues. Make sure all your materials are out of the way. Keep your space clean. And my light blues should be the only ones that are left. So now that I have my strips down, I'm going to be doing the same thing that we've been doing with the rest of our paper, and I'm going to be folding my paper in half, finding those edges, and making a line down here in the middle, really making sure they line up, folding. And now, just like how we did with the strips, we are going to be making some lines down the middle here, okay? So I'm not making my ruler go all the way up to the top because I want to make sure that there's some space right there okay it's about an inch you're leaving open so i'm going to be making about well let's say four or five lines it's really up to you how, how uh why do you want your squares to be you'd really want them to be about the, the same size as your strips that you've made so if you made skinny strips you make skinny lines leaving space at the top All right, 
white. And now I'm going to be cutting down those lines. Alrighty, now that we have our lines, we're going to be opening up our paper. It should look a little bit something like this. And we're going to be having our, our fold up like this. So imagine a book laying flat. So I'm going to move our strips over here, just so they're a little bit closer to us. And now it's up to you how you want your color pattern to be, but you're going to be taking a strip and you're going to be finding the bottom here, okay? Find the bottom and you're going to be taking your second loop here and going underneath and then over the next loop. Under the next loop, over the other one. And so really you're just going back and forth over and under with these loops. So I'm making kind of like a color gradient, making it darker to lighter. So I'm gonna go in with my light blue now, my lighter blue. I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing, but opposite now. So I'm starting underneath and I'm going over and I'm going under. So it look, should look a little bit something like this. And as you go, you're going to be wanting to be pulling these down so that they're flush against each other. And you're going to do that for the whole thing now, all the way up to the top with, with whatever pattern you need. And so now if you get to the top and you realize you don't have enough space for your last loop, you can take that strip out and just make those lines a little bit longer. All right, and there you have it. That's the way it should look once all of your strips are through. To finish it off, to make sure that all of your strips are sturdy, you're gonna be taking your glue stick and finding all these edge flaps. There should be six on each side and just doing a little circle, gluing them down, just to make sure that it's sturdy. You're and then flipping it over and doing the same thing on the other side. All right, and there you have it. You're simple tutorial on how to start your weave. All right, so if you are at home and you love what you've made and you're super proud of it, you can mount it onto a sturdier piece of paper and frame it if you'd like. You could also make almost a whole quilt with a bunch of different colors, anything you'd like. So both of these projects are super easy to do at home. Hopefully you have all the materials just laying around your house. Both of these projects only just need colorful paper. That's the best part about it. Not too many materials, not too many steps, super easy to do at home right now. 
Thank you so much for joining us. I had so much fun with you. Join us again next Saturday for crafts and fun and chilling and relaxing. <laughs> okay, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Goodbye.